Hi, everyone. Um, good evening, and welcome to the keynote of Interrupt. My name is Carlos Kong. I'm a PhD student in art history at Princeton, where I teach contemporary art. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker, Wafa Balal. Wafa Balal is an artist and is currently professor of art at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. His multimedia works span across performance, photography, sculptural installations, and digital media. He has garnered international recognition for the astuteness and urgency with which his artworks address, call into question, and indeed challenge some of today's most pressing political issues, including the technological and psychological dimensions of warfare and surveillance, the militarization of human perception, US Middle Eastern relations and identities, and the destruction and restitution of cultural heritage. Bilal's work is informed by his experience of fleeing his homeland of Iraq, which points to the broader historical and present dynamics of conflict, exile, xenophobia, and Iraqi American identification that subtend the experiential dimension of war and migration in its confrontation through art and media. I first came to know of and admire Wafa Bilal's work through his 2007 performance, Domestic Tension, in which Bilal lived in a Chicago gallery for a month alongside the daunting presence of a loaded paintball gun within the gallery space. In the work, the artist constructed a website through which anyone could point and fire the paintball gun at him. The virtual click became the physical shot of the gun. It intimately materialized both the racist fantasies violently enacted onto the Middle Eastern body, as well as the complicity inherent to our physical and sensory distance from wars fought abroad under the hegemonic guise of foreign policy. By using his own body as a medium that becomes distributed across a field of networked participants, Bilal activates spectators from distance passivity into a position of critical reflection and ethical decision making. In his own words, of using art to get people to examine their own attitudes, prejudices, lives, and behaviors, and hence hopefully reach new levels of understanding of themselves and of others. Despite the context, inscriptions, and mediations of conflict and violence throughout Wafa Bilal's art, such enactments of pain are counterposed with gestures towards reparation and the possibility of intercultural understanding. In his piece, Third Eye, for example, the artist had a, phys had a camera physically implanted into the back of his head, which was programmed to automatically take one photograph per minute. Situating the work's emergence from the images, people, and places that the, artwork left, that the artist left behind while fleeing Iraq and which survive only in his memory, Bilal's backward-looking photographs create a counter-archive that retrospectively glimpses the recovery of the alternate histories left behind in war-driven displacement and exile. Extending gestures of reparation to acts of rebuilding, his recent work, 168 Hours and One Second from 2016, juxtaposes the historical and contemporary destruction of libraries in Iraq and conjoins physical and virtual viewers in the act of repatriating the destroyed library collection of the College of Fine Arts at the University of Baghdad. Wafa Bilal has lectured and exhibited widely, including participation in the 2015 Venice Biennial, the 2017 Asian Art Biennial in Taiwan, as well as recent solo exhibitions at the Art Gallery of Windsor, Canada, and at the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto, among many others. And his book, Shoot an Iraqi, Art, Life, and Resistance Under the Gun, was published by City Lights Publishers in 2008. Please join me in welcoming Wafa Bilal. Carlos, thank you so much for such a wonderful um, introduction. And I uh, really wanted to start um, uh, this by um, saying thank you so much, The Interrupt. You have done an amazing job bringing all of us together. Uh, Claire, Thea, I'm, I'm really um, humble uh, by your effort to they bring so many interrupters into one room. I think the, the yesterday and today reminded me of what we do as artists, as a creative people. We interrupt the status quo 
in order to engage and in order to change people's mind perception and perhaps not enforcing our ideas on them, but rather establishing a platform for engagement. I left Iraq in 1991 as a result of the first Gulf War and oppression of Saddam and ended up in a refugee camp in Saudi Arabia for two years. In both my life in Iraq and the refugee camp, art was my um, choice of medium to, to um, express myself. And when I arrived to the United States in 1992, um, I was faced with a new dimension, uh, one of living in a physical and a virtual space simultaneously, of the comfort zone of United States and the conflict zone of Iraq. But also my way of thinking of art making has changed as well as a result of living far away from the conflict zone. How can I engage the public in a place where the geographical distance uh, it breeds disengagement? And that question remained with me for a very long time um, until one of these moments when our life change forever, and that moment was 2004. I was teaching at the Art Institute of Chicago where I was informed of the death of my brother Haji in our hometown of Kufa by a drone attack um, by the US military. I honestly didn't know how to take the news or I was in denial for so long to accept the realities of losing a family member. And for the th next three years, I was thinking how to confront the lost. And the inspiration came in 2007 when I was watching an American soldier sitting in Colorado directing drones dropping bombs on villages and cities in Iraq with absolutely no psychological or emotional connection to the target. And I picked up the phone and I called Susan Aranko, the owner of Flat File Galleries in Chicago, and I said, I have a piece I wanted to do. And she said, would you explain it? And I said, yes. I said, I wanted to establish this platform where it bring in technology and it bring in multi-dimension, one of the virtual that existed online and establish the gallery as a place where people and the performance take a place. The piece come to uh, be known as domestic tension. Originally I called it shoot an Iraqi and Susan said, you're crazy, you're not going to use that name. Ultimately, I think she was right. By using domestic tension, it strip out of the politics uh, when people encounter the project, they don't have a perceived con uh, idea uh, of what the project is. I told her, I am going to move my living space into a gallery. 